Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Hands on ICB Dev with QMacro, that's me. Coming f to you from a fairly rainy and horrible Manchester afternoon. Um, and I say it's afternoon, uh, stressing that um, I'm never at my best in the afternoon, but we managed to catch the uh, folks in the US, because uh, of course it's 9 a.m. Chicago time, so anybody who's joining from uh, across the pond, welcome. Uh, that's great. So today is Wednesday, of course, and um, it's one of those uh, fortnightly episodes where we allow ourselves a, to go off piste a little bit and do some sort of slightly on the edge uh, stuff uh, on the boundaries of, uh, of what we might otherwise do on a Friday. Um, and there was something that came up. I've mentioned it, I, I think, a couple of times in passing, but there's something that came up uh, recently, which was, to me, great news um, from the CAP team uh, that I thought I'd sort of you know, celebrate and take advantage of uh, with you in an episode. And this is the episode that uh, we could do that, uh, but I'll come to that shortly. Um, yeah, we're going to stick around for an hour, uh, see how it goes. Um, I, I was going to make myself another coffee, but um, I've had too many coffees already. So I've just got my water here. Uh, so let me switch to uh, the main screen. And um, yeah, this is episode 26. So this is the 27th episode. Um, we're going to look at the uh, plugin that I started hacking around with for Vim. Um, because the news from CAP, the CAP team, is that they have now released on the SAP NPM registry, the SAP CDS LSP package um, independently. Okay, I'll explain what that means uh, shortly, but that's what we're gonna to do today. But before we get started, I wanna to, wanted to highlight um, another live coder that I enjoy uh, following. Uh, this person is Jamie Pine. Uh, Jamie does all sorts of really interesting stuff that I'm, again, learning lots from. Quite a prolific uh, streamer. Um, so his uh, videos and his URL, his, his link here on Twitch is uh, Jamie Pine Live. Um, the really interesting thing uh, for me is that uh, he's building live, sort of, you know, in public, uh, his his app, which is this notify.me. Um, it's a, you know, a content... Uh, subscription uh, mechanism that brings together content producers and content consumers. Uh, yeah, really, really interesting the way that he is able to develop this sort of live in front of, you know, in front of a live audience. I, I'm not sure I could do that. Um, I might give it a go uh, at some stage, but no, I, I can't see myself doing that. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a big commitment and uh, yeah, very impressive. So um, if you've not uh, subscribed to or started following, rather, uh, Jamie, um, I would recommend that because uh, the, uh, the videos are, are great things to watch. So that's Jamie. Um, what else have we got here? Yeah, so um, actually, let's just dive straight in. Uh, I think we're going to need at least the whole hour, if not more. But, you know, there's, um, there's always time to come back to this later. But uh, the... Let me set the scene, let me set the context of this. Um, uh, and just jump in on the chat if you've got any questions, of course, uh, or any, um, you know, any, any pointers as to what I should be doing here. But basically, um, as, uh, as those of you who have seen previous episodes know, we have here um, in the tools.hana.ondemand.com uh, SAP Development Tools website, we've got this CDS language support for Visual Studio Code extension. Uh, this is an extension for Visual Studio Code, and it brings all sorts of goodness uh, to you when you're writing uh, CDS in VS Code. And it comes in the form of this VSX file, and we've looked inside here before. I'm just gonna download it anyway. Uh, we've looked inside here before uh, to find well, let's 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 have a look what we found. Let's just move this from um, uh, well, I've just downloaded it to VS Code to let's move it here. Um, let's call it VS Code dot 
zip because it's a zip file really and unzip I'm going to unzip it uh, to here in fact I'm just what's going on here Oop. Unzip it quietly to here and what we saw and I'm sure you've seen this before what we saw that inside it um, it's got a couple of SAP modules, uh, CDS Compiler and CDS LSP. Now, um, CDS LSP is the, uh, the, the, the module, the package, the NPM package, that provides uh, support for the language server protocol, which is a protocol that VS Code and other editors use to um, consume language knowledge. Uh, so that they can provide, for example, syntax highlighting, command completion, uh, find reference, go to definition, and so on. Hey, Mahesh, welcome, and Robert. Welcome, Robert. Um, I'm, I'm saying uh, welcome, Robert, with an extra exclamation mark sort of in the air because last Friday in Utrecht, uh, I was running a code jam on CAP and... Robert was there. So it was awesome to meet you, Robert. Um, I think, uh, well, I had a great time. I think uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, so it was great to meet you, Robert. And thank you very much for the um, uh, Stroop waffle, Waffles. Is that how you pronounce it? I can, ah, useless. But um, they're in the kitchen. Um, I'm not even told Michelle yet. I brought some, I think I did tell you actually, I brought some mini Stroop waffles home. Um, and, um, and also some large Stroop waffles. So thank you for that, Robert. Great to see you. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, where was I? Yes, so we were uh, talking about the fact that uh, LS, the CDS LSP package um, is the thing that um, provides VS Code with sort of LS language server goodness for CDS, right? Uh, and I wanted to do that with Vim, and I built a Vim plugin, um, which we'll have a look at in detail shortly, to sort of wrap around this CDS LSP package and make use of it. I originally started with... Um, the uh, uh, a plugin for for Vim, uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, Neo Vim, auto, language client Neo Vim. Um, it's called language client Neo Vim, but actually it's also for regular Vim. Uh, I started using this, and I got it got the CDS LSP package working with this, and then I discovered um, ALE, asynchronous linting engine. Um, which appealed to me for obvious reasons. Um, and now I'm using that to wrap around the CDS LSP package and, and make use of the goodness that that provides. Um, yes, we'll, we will definitely eat some bitter, bar, bitter ballon together. Um, I really, I think I overdosed on bitter ballon and, um, and uh, croquettes over in Utrecht on uh, Friday. So um, I started looking like, I felt as I was looking like a croquette. Um, Yes, meat and meat. Excellent. Excellent little typo there. Uh, yes. So uh, I've got it working with the asynchronous lint engine, but the challenge was that until recently, uh, the CDS LSP package wasn't actually available outside of, you know, independent, independent of uh, the VSIX, um, VS Code extension. So you have to sort of dig inside that, un unzip it, and bring it out and then use it so it wasn't sort of well officially is not the right word but it was you know it wasn't officially a package because it just happened to be inside this uh language server extension for vs code so i spoke to the uh, wonderful folks in the cap teams and uh, the folks that looking after uh this whole area said well okay yeah we'll release this as a separate module separate package and so they have done. So in fact, but actually before we leave here, let's have a look at the version that comes with the current, where are we, with the current uh, VS Code extension at 114. The version inside there that's sort of, you know, packed in um, statically as it were is uh, 207, as we can see here, 207. Okay, so keep an eye on that. Um, what we'll do, uh, we don't need that anymore. So in fact, I'll extension. Uh, oh, actually, let's go back one. Yeah, that'll do. 
what we'll do is we'll say um, uh, npm config ls to, to make sure, there we go, I've still got my um, SAP registry pointing at the right place. So now we can say uh, npm info SAP CDS LSP. And that should give us some information. And it does. Um, so it was published only a week ago. I think this is the first uh, publication of it straight in at version 2.1.2. So already, um, you know, we're enjoying the benefits of having this particular package published independently, um, you know, freestanding package, as it were, on the SAP NPM registry, because we've already got, you know, a lot more up-to-date version of CDS LSP. Hey, Napit, hello, welcome, 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 welcome. Uh, great to see you here. Uh, good evening, uh, I may say, yes, and uh, yeah, great to have you on board. Um, so what I'm trying to get my head around, and we'll explore this a little bit together, uh, with the emphasis on together, because I'm not really sure what I'm doing. Uh, we'll try and bring, uh, make use of the fact that the CDS LSP package is now available um, directly, as it were, as in without having to go a roundabout way and dig into a, um, a disguised zip file to bring it out. And try and try and start using this 2.1.2 version of SAP CDS LSP in the Vim plugin, with a view to eventually me releasing that plugin on GitHub for anybody else to use, and so on. So we also need to think about how we can make the merging of the SAP CDS LSP package or the you know the usage of it. Uh, Design in such a way that you know somebody installing the CDS, uh, 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 the Vim CDS, Vim plugin, can then do an N npm uh, install of CDS LSP, and it all works nicely. Sort of you know relative paths and everything. So no nothing hard coded. That's the eventual goal. I'm not sure we'll get there today, because uh, like I say, it said on Twitter earlier, I'm not really sure what I'm doing because this is, I don't know. I mean, first of all, um, you know this is the afternoon, so I'm useless in the afternoon. Uh, but secondly, it's quite an interesting, fascinating um, coming together of lots of different, quite involved, quite complex technologies. We have VimScript, with which Vim plugins are written. We've got the asynchronous linting engine, which has its own, well, not language, but own uh, fairly uh, involved uh, definition mechanisms which we'll maybe have a look at as well. And of course, we've got the language server protocol itself and and the the ways that the langu language servers can be and should be uh, instantiated so that the editors and the IDEs can connect to them and make use of the language knowledge goodness that they have. So there's all sorts of things coming together. So why don't we start? I've got a little team session here. Um, I guess you can see that okay. Um, I thought we'd start with where I left off with the uh, Vim CDS plugin, just to have a look at the plugin and how it works, and then we can think about um, how we might take advantage of the fact that we've now got SAP CDS LSP available on the SAP registry. So I've already um, created a second uh, TMUX window here, and uh, this is the current state of the uh, Vim CDS plugin. Okay, so we can the Git folder, obviously. Um, so the way that you, um, or the way that I built this plugin, I've got this little sort of helper file here, which I'll, I'll, I'll come to shortly. Um, but um, I've got, first of all, I suppose this is the simplest thing. Um, I've got this uh, file type detector, which is a standard folder name. And it has a file in there called cds.vim. You know, I've, I've decided, of course, that you know the the file type is going to be called cds. Why not? It makes a lot of sense because the file extensions are also .cds that we want to, you know, embellish with all the syntax highlighting and language server goodness. So what this says basically is, well, when um, there's a new file in the buffer, or when there's a file read into the buffer, and that file has this pattern, uh, that file name has this pattern, as in something.cds, then set the file type to cds. Okay, so far so good. You know, so sort of, 
I guess it's like a slight Unix philosophy here, where you know we have one thing that you know it, each 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 component, if I can say that word, each component does one thing and one thing only. Okay, so that's the um, the CDS Vim file inside of FT Detect. Um, we've also got um, a syntax folder, which is another standard folder um, that you'll find in plugins. So you can you can install plugins for Vim that will do syntax highlighting for certain uh, languages or certain um, certain configuration file types. CDS is no exception because you know, if you remember when um, when you open up a file in VS Code, a CDS file, it's all beautifully syntax highlighted, and it turns out that that syntax highlighting doesn't come directly from the language server. But it comes from configuration inside of the same, you know, inside of that VSIX bundle. Um, and in a previous episode, so help me out, remind me here. I think uh, Napit, you were around, Mahesh, you were around. Um, we did look briefly at that, and I noted that the syntax of the syntax highlighting code for VS Code came originally from TextMate. Okay, when we, if you looked in the VSX file, there was this TM language extension, which came from TextMate, which is a, you know, an editor that people, I think some people still use, especially in the days when you know, Rails was, was uh, Ruby on Rails was just you know, coming to the fore and you know, having its peak uh, or in rising. Anyway, anyway so um, what I had to do was do my own syntax highlighting in the standard Vim way. And I think we had a brief look at this anyway, didn't we? So this is this cds.vim file inside of syntax. And it's got all sorts of sort of um, different types of matches here to match different uh, types of things in CDS files. And then those match names are then um, decorated or described as either keywords or comments or strings or constants or functions, which have then, you know, in an abstract way, which have then uh, relations to sets of colors so we can keep the color schemes separate from the syntax definitions so that works nicely as well right so that's all fine and that you know the syntax highlighting would work now you know without any asynchronous linting engine without CDS LSP just to have nice syntax highlighting for CDS but we want, we want to go further right so we want to go and have a look at um, how we configure this plugin also to um, play along with uh, ALE. So ALE, uh, the asynchronous linting engine, which we had a look briefly at the start. Um, I've got that. In fact, if I open up a new uh, window here in Tmux and have a look at my um, Vim configuration, I've also, since last time, switched to a different plugin manager in Vim. Um, I thought it was time. I was using Pathogen before, which was great. Um, but because I was looking so intently at um, other plugins from this author here, uh, June Gunn, um, it made sense for me to investigate a little bit further because I, th I think, am I right in saying, yeah, yeah, of course, um, the, 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 the Vim plug plugin manager is also from June Gun, right? Okay, so uh, and it's really cool. Um, I won't go through this now, but basically all you have to do um, is specify the plugins that you um, want. And, um, what's that there? Oh, there we go. Uh, the, okay, no. Plugins that you want, and it will auto install them if they don't already exist. But the really nice thing as well is that um, you can also specify local plugins by pointing not to a um, a repo reference, you know, a, rep a repository on GitHub, for example, for this one here, June gone fzf.vim, that references github.com, June, go, there we go, that'll do, um, June gone, um, what did we say here, fzf.vim. So that line 13 there points to this plugin, okay? Um, but you can also uh, specify uh, plugins that are local. So obviously this, uh, this Vim CDS plugin is local, it's not on GitHub yet. 
Um, hopefully it will be. Uh, so this plugin right now is in my Vim CDS folder uh, in Dollar Home Local Project Vim CDS. Okay, fine. Um, so that is what that's all about. Let me go back to here, and I've also then got this ALE plugin, right? So I've, I mean, I've installed the ALE plugin. The ALE plugin is there, and when it starts up, it looks in various places, um, specifically in folders in your plugins called ALE linters for files. So we've got ALE linters CDS, CDS.vim. And this thing here is almost like a, a configuration following the ALE mechanism to point to um, a linter, um, which is effectively you know, a global class under which um, language servers come in the ALE universe, uh, as far as I can tell. And um, there's all sorts of configuration that we'll look at in a bit more detail shortly. So that is what is inside uh, the cds.vim in the ALE linters folder. And finally, this thing here refers to start CDS LSP. Um, so this is like a little bootstrap script, which I'm hoping eventually to get rid of. Um, but it was the simplest thing I could I could think of to actually start up the language server from the SAP CDS LSP package. Okay, so let's have a look at that. Um, that is this the last file we're going to look at here. That is this start CDS LSP uh, file, which is basically a bash script that just uses Node to start up something, right? And what is this something? This something is the language server itself inside of the CDS LSP directory. Now that directory currently, I've sort of lifted out of the VSX um, zip file effectively and plonked it straight into the CDS LSP uh, directory here, into this, uh, sorry, straight into the um, Vim CDS plugin uh, directory here, which is, you know, not scalable. We can't expect people who want to install this plugin to have to unpack and install into here. So this is what I'm trying to figure out. Um, but while we're here right now, um, let's just make sure things work before we start changing things and, uh, and you know going in the direction we want to go in. Okay, um, are, are we uh, are we all okay? Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. Good. 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 Um, over here, why don't we start with? Let's just. Um, CDS, we've got the latest version of CDS, 3.10 CDS in it. Let's just call it test. Okay, let's just create a simple, you know, um, initialized skeleton CDS project because we know we've got the books uh, entity and a service that uses those books as well. So you know, just rather than look for an existing CDS uh, project. Um, CDS or CD test. Let's go in there when it's ready. And yeah, there we go. We've got the we've got the data model in DB, and we've got the cat service CDS file in uh, serve. Okay, actually, let's, let's use um, let's use Vim and um, DB data model. There we go. So we've got a CDS file. Okay, so we're down here, just here. We can see that the file type detecting is working. And we can also, of course, see that the syntax highlighting is working, but we can also see, hopefully, that uh, ALE is up and running and connected to the language server from the CDS LSP package. If I remove the E of that, we get a nice um, indication that there's an error, okay, on, on two lines, of course, because I've, you know, I've removed the entity, uh, E from entity. Okay, that's great. And, um, can see oh, location toggle location list oh yeah let's ignore that for now um if i put that back it's all fine um, also if i go to um cat service for example um i can do things like ale ah this is the reason why i didn't have um i've got this this um, key caster on um but the, the current preferences here uh, the selected, the default visualizer puts the stuff down here and you can't really see what I'm typing. So I will put it back to 
this svelte visualization, which should be just next to me, just there. Maybe I'll put it there. Yeah, there we go. So we can see that. Okay. So um, ALE find uh, go to definition. So these are all commands, ALE commands, that will then invoke the right or make the right calls to the language server to go and ask it for that information and to provide that sort of you know uh, inter component reference. So if we do ALE go to definition, it should take us straight to the data model.cds and it'll take us to the books definition. Okay. Uh, and in fact, I guess if we also say entity authors, let's add the authors um, ID uh, integer and uh, name, that'll do name string. We can see we've got the command completion, right? So that's working as well. Uh, why don't we have also um, author is an association to uh, authors. So we can see all the stuff we're getting from CDSLS is coming from CDSLSP. So we say um, name and um, books association ooh, to many books on uh, books dot author equals self. Okay, good. Ooh, what's this here? Um, blah, 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 blah. The target my bookshop authors of the managed association author does not have keys. The target my the target authors of the managed association author. Oh, there. There we go. Okay, fine. So we can see right now. Um, that the CDS LSP is doing its uh, doing its business uh, very nicely, but I suppose more important, just as importantly for us, the connection between Vim and the CDS LSP package is working through the configuration that we gave to ALE. Right, so let's just go through that. It's alive. It is alive. It is amazing. Um, also, I'm I'm using this really um, nice. Uh, oh, I didn't think already. Oh, yeah, of course. I'm using this really, I think it's really nice, uh, really nice um, plugin called, I think you pronounce it Groovebox, which is basically uh, a color scheme. I just love this color scheme. It's like so relaxing. Um, so, anyway, yes. Um, <coughs> um, so, what I want to do is have a look to see how this works and see. What we might do uh, instead of you know lifting the CDS LSP directory out of the VSX expanded VSX folder and putting it here, if we can then do an uh, npm uh, install of SAP CDS LSP and sort of somehow use that, then that'd be great. Maybe we'll do it um, in a you know a hard you know simplest thing that possibly work first and then work out where we have to sort of remove the hard coding, uh, you know in, in in the one step at a time. Uh, approach to things. Okay, so um, that's fine. Let's go to Vim CDS and have a look. So this is a, this is the thing that's uh, we've got right now. Um, so we don't want to use this CDS LSP um, folder anymore. Uh, but let's have a look where this is referenced. We've got this start CDS LSP, and um, it's referenced here, isn't it? We've got. Simple bootstrap script to start the CS LSP server in the standard I.O. mode. Now, what does that mean? Well, looking into it very briefly, um, there are different ways of uh, bootstrapping, starting up a language server. Um, and it can be, and, and those different ways really describe uh, the method with which it should be uh, talked to. So um, you can talk to it through standard IO, or you can talk to a language server, for example, through a socket. Um, the thing that I've managed to get working for the CDS LSP uh, language server is through standard IO, which is the reason why I've got here the uh, standard IO parameter here. 
what that means is that if we if I go into um, the package, let's go to project and CDS CDS LSP. Uh, no, sorry, Vim CDS CDS LSP. Um, we can see, if we go into there, um, we can see um, in the out folder, which looks like I mean, why would it be called out? I'm guessing it. This particular thing is because uh, it's generated. I don't know. In the source folder, I do some digging and I found this server.js. So I ran it. And that's how I originally found how, how to start the uh, CDS LSP uh, language server up. Uh, so if we say uh, node out source server.js, nothing happens, right? Um, and various trial and error uh, hours later or minutes later, there we go. So that sort of sits there now and listens for incoming language server cl client requests and then responds. Okay. So this is how we have to start the server up. So let's kill that for now. And that's the reason we don't need that one now, do we? Um, what's going on here? What? Ah, what's wrong with my keyboard? What's wrong with me? There we go. We don't need that. Let's get rid of that. There we go. Um, this is why we've got this invocation from node here. Um, really, this is just a bit of a hack to say, well, where am I? Uh, and I can tell if, if I know where I am, I know at least how to find uh, the CDS LSP folder or directory and the outsource server.js in it. Um, so instead, why don't we... Um, First of all, well, let's rename this um, CDS LSP. Let's rename it with, a, with an underscore, okay? So it's sort of out of the way. It can't be found. So I guess theoretically, if we now um, go into, uh, sorry, uh, Vim. What is, oh, my brain not working here. Um, if we go into DB data model, and remove that, for example, cause an error, we don't get anything, okay? So we, you know, we know we sort of switched it off, turned it away because it can't find, can't invoke this server.js, I guess. Okay, good. Um, so instead, what we need is to provide the, um, uh, the link here and point it to somewhere else. Now, here's a question for you. Do you think we need to be able to install CDS LSP globally and refer to that global installation? Or do you think the install of the Vim CDS plugin should automatically do an NPM install locally inside the plugin of the CDS LSP package? The more of, if I say that out loud, I, th I think that we should go for the latter. Um, partly because, you know, global modules are less desirable generally, I feel. Um, yeah, okay, well, let's try that. Um, if anybody, anybody's got any uh, other ideas or other suggestions or points to, to make, please let me know. Um, okay, so if we say, um, well, I guess this isn't right now um, uh, this isn't an NPM project. So let's initialize it as a project. Okay, let's just go through that there. And okay, so we've now got this package.json. Okay, fine. NPM install SAP CDS LSP. So if we are now install um, SAP CDS LSP in this folder locally, let's see what happens. Okay, well, seems to have worked. Um, if anybody's here has seen a Vim plugin that exists as an NPM package, let me know. I mean, we're sort of merging two, well, I feel as though we're merging two worlds, at least two worlds here. Um, but anyway, yeah, because I just you know, noticing this Vim CDS at 1.0.0, it's quite 
quite an interesting concept. Anyway, okay, so let's have a look. We've now got package.json where we've got the dependency um, on SAP CDS LSP, which is great. Uh, we've got package lock, of course, which some people always say commit that to Git. Other people say don't commit that to Git. I don't really know. Um, so that's fine. So we've also therefore got the node modules directory, which is, of course, as a result of uh, installing this SAP CDS LSP package. And we can see here that um, we've got, oh, we've got CDS LSP and CDS compiler. So does that mean npm info sat CDS LSP? Yes, okay. So it tells us here that CDS LSP as a package from SAP has a dependency on CDS compiler. So of course, CDS compiler also needs to be installed. Interesting. Okay. Okay. And of course, it's got uh, dependencies on these other things as well. <coughs> um, okay. So now, uh, in node modules, we have what's in dot bin. We've got the CDS compiler, and we've got this. What's this? Syntax highlighting CDS sources and command line interface to. Oh, command line interface to LSP like features for CDS. Uh, oh, there we go. The output could be used directly by some editors, e.g. Emacs. Emacs? I'm not saying anything. Um, uh, planned out. Go to definition. Highlight. Interesting. Okay. Maybe it's worth having a play around with this, or I'll maybe see if I can find the person who wrote this and see what I have to say. But um, I think that what we need for now is just the CDS LSP server, which out. Interesting. Okay, so there's no intermediate source directory in the path here. So it's um, SAP CDS LSP out and then server.js. So why don't we quit out here and say, no, let's see what happens, right? Node, node modules, um, SAP CDS LSP out server.js standard IO. See if that also does the same thing, which it does. Okay, cool. In that case, let's see what we have to do. Let's see what we have to do to um, kick off that server with standard IO. Uh, um, let's go in here again. Um, if we have a look at the linter file, first of all, what's this doing? This is saying that the, the starter script start CDS LSP. Um, that is in the local project of VimCDS. That's like hard coded. We need to get rid of that eventually as well, right? But let's just leave that for now. Um, I've got an inkling that this linter definition ALE configuration here might give us the possibility of specifying this dash dash standard IO parameter. Oh, Funk Dev, thank you for following and welcome. Um, are you on the stream now? Hey, Ronnie, howdy, great to see you. Uh, and Funk Dev, thank you very much for following, it's very kind. Um, so I'm thinking that the definition syntax uh, for a linter in ALE might give us the opportunity to present the dash dash standard IO parameter that we need to invoke it, which is partly the reason or mainly the reason why I had to create this start CDS LSP thing in the first place. Okay, so, um, Let's go and have a look at start CDS LSP, which is this thing here. So really what we need to do now, let's just, let's do, hack it so it works first. It's gonna be node modules, right, from wherever we are, um, and then SAP, CDS LSP, and then there's no, um, oops, uh, there's no source intermediate directory name. Okay, so that's the simplest. That's the simplest change that could possibly work. Um, 
So we check that that works. Uh, I want to do a step at a time. So if we run that now, hmm, no, it's not working. Okay, not working. Why is that not working? Um, let's just have a look here. Um, just make sure. I'll make sure it's not that backslash here, the escape. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da, node modules, SAP, CDS, LSP. That's the right path, isn't it? In fact, why don't we try it? Start CDS LSP. Okay, good. That is working now. I wonder if it would worked with that slash. Oops. Come on. My brain is just so not working in the afternoons. Ah, okay, good. So it was the backslash. Um, okay, good. So let's go here and remove it. So let's try that again. That's working. Okay, good. Good. Um, does everything else work? Let's just check. Let's go down to um, books and do a uh, ALE go to definition. Yeah, Ooh, go to definition. Oh, hold on. Did I do that right? Let's get rid of the highlighting here. Let's say um, ALE go to definition. Yes, it does. It does work. It does work. Uh, in fact, um, if you have a look, if we have a look at the uh, my Vim configuration, I have set up, and this is a while ago, I forgot about them, I've set up a couple of um, mappings. Uh, GD is uh, leader GD is go to definition and leader FR is find references and these are these are mappings to the ALE commands go to definition and go to and find references so we can say I think if I go here um, and I say comma GD it will work yeah and also I can say comma FR and it will find references in there fine okay good um, oh now I've noticed this before. I was expecting to see, if I do find reference again, we see it's referenced, of course, on line 13 um, uh, in data model CDS, which is uh, down here, right? In position 32. Now, it's not found the reference in, have we got the reference in the catalog service? Let's just quit out of here and It is there, isn't it? Books. DB data model CDS. Oh, okay, it did work. It is working. Okay, fine. Um, it's in cut service, so we can go straight there. Fine. I'm not sure why it didn't work before. So the question is, we've 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 managed now. I mean, and I can imagine as well in the. Um, package.json, we could have this dependency, right? And we do an npm uh, install to install the CDS LSP. We can actually, let's get rid of this now, De delete that directory entirely. Um, and yeah, you can imagine when we do the uh, install of the Vim CDS LSP plugin, sorry, in, in, of the Vim CDS plugin, Everything's three characters, NPM, Vim, CDS. It just confuses me a little bit. Um, yes, hi, Abhijit, welcome. Uh, this session is recorded. All the sessions are recorded. In fact, let me just show you for those for those newcomers. Oh, I've got, I've got it there, actually. Um, if you have a look at the top of... Um, that's the URL. If you go there, you'll get to here. And if you look at the top you can see catch the replays. And once um, a live session is over, you can go and find it. The canonical place is, in fact, bit.ly, hands-on SAP dev, and then slash, for example, episode 24, right? And that should take you straight to um, the episode 24 section of the blog post, and you can get to the replay on YouTube, for example, and if until it goes on YouTube, it's also available on Twitch. So last week's is still 
not been annotated uh, and it's, it's still available on Twitch and so on. So hopefully that uh, will give you some information there. Um, yeah, and also for the ones that have been annotated, this is what um, annotation looks like. Uh, for example, here we had Ronnie and uh, now Pete on and you can see these blog posts and then you can say, oh, this is this is the interesting part. I want to look at this one. Click straight on the uh, hours, minutes and seconds and go straight to the point in the recording um, to see what that was. So hopefully that answers your question, Abhijit. Uh, so where are we? Yeah, so I can imagine using... Um, npm install once the vim plugin has been installed or maybe as part of the install process to bring in sap cds lsp but now how do we make um this whole thing sort of portable um i guess that's the next question because of course we while this thing start cds lsp is actually okay because that is still contained this file is still contained within the vim cds plugin directory so that's cool so it's not actually this okay Ronnie uh, dinner time excellent uh, great to see you yes and uh, oh you oh yes do you evolved UI5 homework um, yeah keep catching up there Nappy I think you're doing the evolved uh, UI5 course as well let us know how it is anybody else doing the evolved UI5 course um, I did the original UI5 course on OpenSAP it was awesome I've not managed to do the evolved one yet uh, I'm sure it's fantastic. Uh, see, yeah, see you on Twitter. Thanks, Ronnie. Um, yeah, Nappy, I think you're doing it as well. I think I'm, I've noticed some tweets from you about that. Um, so, yeah, thinking about it, it's not this that we need to independentify. I just made that up. Um, it's actually the pointer to it because that's, that's this thing that's got... Um, this reference here to local project BIM CDS start CDS LSP. Now, I'm just wondering whether in the real world, when you have a plugin, you're going to know, or VIM is going to, we got to be able to work out where that plugin is. Are we not? Because all the other plugins, ah, no, wait a minute. Where are the rest of the plugins? Um, if we go to the Vim folder, yeah, um, I remember when I was using um, Pathogen, Pathogen uh, wanted me to install my plugins into this directory called Bundle. I don't know what that was. A, that was a hard and fast rule, but all my plugins were in bundle. Here, they're in a, a directory called plugged. And of course, the Vim CDS plugin would also be in this plugged directory if somebody was using uh, the, the plug plugin manager. So how do we make this independent? Hmm. Um, hey, oh, hi. Yes, uh, Falker, um, even though I've been around a while in UI5, oh, I like that word, the UI5 verse, and the UI5 verse, there's always new stuff to learn, especially in the detail. Yes, there is. I mean, especially with UI5, um, it's such a an accomplished uh, framework. Uh, I, I've always tried to call it a, uh, what have I tried to call it? A, a UI5, it's a toolkit, um, only because... I heard from one of the one of the core members once uh, they didn't like it to be called a framework. I'm not sure why. So I've always tried to call it a toolkit. Anyway, framework is okay. So yes, it's such an accomplished framework with so many things that there's always new stuff to learn. And of course, it's also evolving all the time, right? So hence the UI5 evolved um, uh, course, I guess. Um, so how are we going to do this? Um, well, let's... Have a look at, I wonder if there's a way of ALE or you, knowing where it is, because maybe we could work out from there. Um, am I overcomplicating this? 
Da, 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 da. Let's just go through this and just let our brains cruise for a minute. So this function definition here is uh, get project root, okay? And this thing, get project root, is um, used in the definition of the ALE linter. Um, and the get project root takes a buffer. I'm not quite sure what a buffer is. Well, sorry, yes. I mean, I know a buffer, what a buffer is in, in Vim. Maybe it's the same thing, I'm not sure. It takes a buffer and in that buffer goes to goes and uses this, this find nearest file thing, which I guess is provided by ALE, to go and find um, this .cdsrc file, which is what you get when you scaffold a new uh, cat project, CDS project. In fact, let's have a look here. Um, yeah, there we go, CDSRC, that's got some default uh, configuration, environmental configuration, which we did look at very, very briefly uh, in a previous episode, but we'll look at that more when we, when I finally get my brain back into gear and all my uh, you know, personal stuff sort of, not out of the way, but uh, you know, a little bit more uh, stable back here in Manchester and start to have a look at more of that. Um, so, um, so that's the CDSRC file and uh, it basically goes and finds the, uh, the project file. So in fact, why don't we, just to see what's going on, in Vim, uh, oh, I thought, echo hello. Yeah, okay, there's an echo command. There's an also, also an echo m command. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what the difference is. Uh, um, Vim, ooh, echo, echo, m. Move that there, echoing messages. Echo, echo, m, oh, persistent echo, that's right, persistent echo, bottom of the window. Okay, ah, yes, that's right. So if I say now, um, echo, m, persistent, Yeah, hello and persistent. So those are the ones that are uh, have been put there through echo M, I guess. So anyway, let's say um, echo M L project file. Let's see what that is. Uh, apparently, in function definitions in Vim scripts, you have to have a new line um, before the return statement of a function. Okay, so that's why this is, looks a little bit weird to me, but anyway. Um, so now if we uh, go into here and um, open up the data model, there we go. So we can see down, down here in slash private, I don't know why Mac OS puts the temp directory inside of private, but anyway, um, we've got our test fold, uh, directory, which is our um, CDS project, cat project. And that's where that file is. Okay, fine. Um, we've got the project file there, but it's not really helping us, is it? Uh, we want to know not where the project is, but where the Vim CDS plugin is. Um, if we say, oh, now, can we get close by echoing where, for example, I know that there's a, a dollar VimRC environmental variable. is not um, home okay okay so expansion of dollar environmental variables is working it's just that there isn't oh the dot vmr i thought it was a oh wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute i think it's called my vmrc isn't it Yes, okay, so users i347491 dot vmrc allows us to find at least where the dot vmrc is. Okay, um, what other possibilities have we got? Uh, apart from reading the documentation, which of course I don't want to do uh, on a live stream, I can leave, read the documentation sort of offline. Um, one thing I've seen is in the 
is it uh, in the um, Vim configuration, we can set something like let global, why don't we call it um, CDS, Vim CDS um, fruit equals banana, right? There. Um, and we can now hopefully say g vim cds uh, oh how many functions are set um, vim cds fruit okay so we can get access to variables that we can set in our vim rc so maybe 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 this will take us down the path of actually, maybe we should start by trying the, the global install first. Then again, yeah, okay. It does make, it does make the Vim CDS plugin project and the SAP CDS LSP slightly more independent of one another, which thinking about it maybe is a good thing. And then what we could do is require for making this Vim plugin work and the configuration setup, we could say, right, just in your VimRC point to where you installed your SAP CDS LSP. Okay, would that help? Um, well, let's set, let's do a uh, CDS LSP location. Okay, um, fine, let's just do that for now. Sort of visualize what that might be. And CDS executable, ooh, now. Ah, okay. Um, what we need to do then is pass that to the script that runs the start, the startup, the script that's, um, uh, wait a minute. Uh, oh, let's just look at, look at it here instead. Um, where are we, where are we, where are we? Projects, there we go. Um, yeah, we need to pass it to this script here. That needs to know where it is. Hmm, okay. <sighs> um, well, we've managed successfully to use the CDS LSP package from the NPM registry. But I need to do a bit more thinking about how I wire these things up. If anybody's got any um, ideas, then let me know. Um, Am I making this more difficult than it needs to be? I'm not quite sure. I've just also realized that we're just about out of time. So what I will do after this, well, not after this directly, because I'm going to assume a dad, um, is um, have a read of the documentation for ALE and for um, NPM and see if I can figure out how I can bring these two things together. Um, I think we'll leave it there, as we've only got a minute left anyway. Thank you so much for joining today. It was a bit random, a little bit off-piste, um, but I think what I'll do is I'll work on this on the in the background. The next Wednesday episode, which will be in a couple of weeks' time, we'll do something different. So if you've got any suggestions as to what to do off-piste, uh, let me know. Um, and of course, the next scheduled episode is gonna be this Friday, the regular Friday slot at 8 a.m. Manchester time. And uh, yeah, I'll see you then. Thanks very much for joining and have a great day, afternoon, evening, night. Bye.